So what this means for us is, is that the attention is sort of shifted to, well, what could China potentially ban next? What is the next metal? Because there's been germanium, gallium, graphite, antimony. And now the question is what net is, is what metal is next? Um, and all the experts that I sort of listen to and, and read articles from have suggested that tungsten is the most likely metal to be banned by the China, uh, by China, um, and I've heard as, as early as sometime this year before the 2024 is out. So, um, the reason why this is so critical for us, is because antimony, about 50% of the world's antimony comes from China. Tungsten, it's significantly more than that. About 86% of total global supply of tungsten comes from China. Oliver Friesen, good morning to you, and how are you? I'm doing well, and how are you doing? Doing good. I shouldn't say good morning. You're out of the UK, so good afternoon to you. A um, lot of stuff going on in the world here, uh, a lot of geopolitics, and uh, you be with the uh, Guardian Metal Resources, uh, having the largest tungsten deposit in the U.S. I think what was key here, what happened last uh, August with uh, China banning themselves exports on uh, strategic metals. Tell me about that. What's going on? Yeah, no, I mean, there's been a lot going on. I know we spoke uh, several months ago, Andy, but the landscape surrounding critical metals, but I think more importantly, defense metals. And when I talk about defense metals, uh, antimony and tungsten. Now you mentioned the, the export ban um, that was announced out of China uh, of, of anti antimony exports. That was a really big ruling by the, 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 the Chinese Communist Party. Reason being, uh, antimony is a metal that's critical in the defense industry, and it's used quite heavily within the manufacturing of ammunitions. Uh, but the other major metal that's used within the manufacturing of ammunitions, plus a whole plethora of other defense use cases, is tungsten. Uh, tungsten is the highest melting point and is the most dense metal on the planet, so it's almost irreplaceable in a lot of these defense technologies. And really what happened with this antimony export ban, that was a direct shot from China to the U.S. defense and to the U.S. critical metal supply chain. Um, the antimony prices has gone up considerably since then. Uh, and the U.S. is scrambling now to try to find, you know, domestic and safe sources of, tongue, of antimony, sorry, to fill that void. Um, and, and, and ideally in, in, in very short order because the U.S. needs to, the, the antimony to continue to, to fund um, the metals required for the defense industry, plus a, a wide array of other kind of very high tech use cases. So what this means for us is, is that the attention is sort of shifted to, well, what could China potentially ban next? What is the next metal? Because there's been germanium, gallium, graphite, antimony. And now the question is what net is, is what metal is next? Um, and all the experts that I sort of listen to and, and read articles from have suggested that tungsten is the most likely metal to be banned by the China, uh, by China. Um, and I've heard as, as early as sometime this year before the 2024 is out. So, um, the reason why this is so critical for us is because antimony, about 50% of the world's antimony comes from China. Tungsten, it's significantly more than that. About 86% of total global supply of tungsten comes from China. And as I mentioned, tungsten is such a critical component and input metal into the defense industry. So the U.S. on national security grounds is saying, well, we need, we need our own safe, secure supplies of antimony, of tungsten, of all these metals that we currently don't have any production of. Um, and, and, and in terms of antimony, Perpetual Resources is a great name to look at. They have a significant antimony project in nearby Idaho, and the government is now looking at them saying, hey, help us solve this problem. Um, and, and with tungsten, you're kind of a Canadian reference for you, where the puck is going. Well, tungsten is where the puck is going. Um, and obviously, as you mentioned there, we hold what is believed to be the largest tungsten deposit on U.S. soil. We're also in the state of Nevada. That's the best place, best juris jurisdiction in the world to explore, to develop. Um, so we're in a fantastic position here. People are still waking up to tungsten. They're still kind of focused on antimony and, and what are we doing here and how do we solve this issue? Um, but like I said, you know, there's a lot of speculation that tungsten is next to come here and the U S currently has no domestic supply, mine supply of tungsten and their biggest 
import partner is China. You can imagine what will happen in the event that China does uh, announce an export ban uh, of tungsten into the U.S. And, and puts a huge spotlight on companies like us, Guardian Metal Resources, as owners of what we believe to be the largest tungsten deposit in the U.S. So it's, it's national security implications. It's very significant right now. This trend is not going away. I wish it was, but the geopolitical tensions are we need to go into detail about what those look like. But the, the, the time is now for the U.S. to have safe domestic sources of these metals, including tungsten. Yeah, so there's a lot to unpack there. And I would actually like to go a little bit into the geopolitical mess um, that we've just found ourselves in. But let me just ask this question. If, if since this happened with uh, China banning uh, these strategic and critical metals, such as antimony, and we believe soon to be tungsten, what are we going to do? And that's almost a rhetorical question, but I want you to answer it. Yeah, I mean, it, it's honestly, it's a tough situation. Um, and I, I think the answer to that question is yeah. we don't know yet. Um, there's no there's no advanced projects in the U.S. Um, that can provide, you know, very short-term tungsten. We are the most advanced as far as we know, working on a, a PFS study right now, which will get us closer to that production scenario. Um, on top of that, just to make this situation even more critical, the Defense Logistics Agency, which is... Uh, meant to hold massive stockpiles of critical metals for wartime. That was the reason the DLA was originally put together, um, has sold off the major, vast majority of, of their reserves of tungsten and a lot of other critical metals. Um, and the Harris administration just announced that they're supporting funding to build those stockpiles back up. Um, mm -hmm. well, wh why, why were they sold off? Right. You know, I think, I think it was the Obama administration, um, you know, about a decade ago. At the time, the, the geopolitical tensions globally were not what they are today. Um, and the, the viewpoint was, well, we can rely on China and Russia and North Korea for these critical metals. But obviously that's not the case because they're now weaponized, these, weaponizing these metals against us. So the DLA is going to need to start buying tungsten too. So the DOD, the DLA, a lot of these really important organizations in the U.S. Uh, need tungsten. And as, as you mentioned there, if, if China bans the exports of tungsten, which they may or may not do, but either way, the time for a domestic supply is now. So where does it all come from? Well, we need to band together, but we're trying to do our part here as owners of this incredibly important project to say, hey, we're going to get this thing. We're going to advance this thing. We're going to get it to production as quickly as we can so we can be part of the solution. We're not going to be you know, party to help uh, come up with a solution here. It's going to, as, as I said, it's going to take multiple groups and companies banding together in the Western world to figure this out. But we at Guardian think we can play a very important role um, of the solution here for Tungsten, which, as I mentioned, is a critical metal for the defense space right now and a lot of other use cases for Tungsten. We can go into more detail. Yeah, well, Oliver, uh, you've had some news just come out. Just I want to say it was Friday or over the weekend. It just hit the fan and it's really playing into this about how you're going to be a part of the solution here. Tell me about, uh, tell me about that. What just happened with, uh, Guardian Metal Resources and Pilot Mountain? Yeah, of course. So as I just alluded to, you know, we're looking to be part of the solution and, and the way we're doing that is advancing this project as quickly as we can. Um, there's certain steps that a company needs to take before they can go into production. So we're saying, Hey. Here's the timeline. Let's try to speed this up. Let's try to get through all these steps so we can be part of the solution as, as quickly as possible. Uh, and part of those steps are one of the important parts of those steps um, is to, is to, well, as I mentioned, you could complete a, what's called a pre visit feasibility study, but to do that, you need resource, uh, a resource at a certain classification, which means you need a very high degree of confidence about what you currently have in the ground. Um, so what we have right now, as I mentioned, is believed to be the largest tungsten deposit in the U.S. But the lead up to the PFS study, we've been, we've um, launched a, a very large scale drilling campaign to not only increase our confidence in the resource, but also look to expand the resource down dip in a long strike. Um, so it, it, the original intention was to drill about 2,000 meters. Um, we're north of 3,000 meters now, and we're probably going to get closer to, I would say, about 5,000 meters when this is all said and done. But when you're doing this, what's called up resource upgrade drilling, you're drilling into areas of the deposit that have never been drilled before. So the way the deposit was put together previously, there's what's called a block model. So the block model kind of interpolates across the known 
drilling results to say, hey, this is roughly what this deposit looks like in the subsurface. But as we're drilling into these brand new zones, which had never been drilled before, you don't know what you're going to find necessarily because yes, there is holes that are within call it 50 plus meters away, but geology is geology and there can be all these different complexities to deposit. Um, so typically when you're drilling these upgrade holes, it, it kind of just confirms what you thought was going to be there. Um, but sometimes, and if you're, if you're lucky and you've done the, the right work to drill in the right areas, uh, you could be very pleasantly surprised. And that's exactly what happened with the, the press release that we put out actually this morning here, Monday. Um, so we were drilling in an area of the deposit that was, was previously known as being relatively low grade, um, 0.1, 0 0.2% WO3. Um, we were just looking to kind of confirm that area and then move on. But sure enough, we actually encountered what is the best drill hole ever completed on the project, um, which is obviously a very significant development. I'll just kind of quickly read you those results because they are so significant. Um, we had 39.3 meters of 0.735% WO3. Now that has significant silver uh, at about just under 40 grams per ton and copper at 0.44. So on a tungsten equivalent basis, if you just assume hundred percent recovery of all those metals, it's north of 1% tungsten equivalent over uh, 39.3 meters. And just to add another uh, important detail about that intersection, why we're so excited is it's also near surface. So what we have is a conceptual pit shell that was put together as in, this is roughly what the open pit would look like in a mining scenario. And almost the entirety of that 40 meter interval of very, very high grade tungsten um, was within that pit shell, which, which means it was ground that would have to be mined anyways in a production scenario. So what we've done is we've replaced, call it 0.1 and 0.2% WO3 blocks with now, once we do an updated resource as part of the PFS, that upgraded and really high grade tungsten intercepting um, will replace what was there previously, which is a very important development as we push this project forward. Excellent. Okay. So, um, what is an ETA, I guess, is, or what, what are the next steps, if you would, getting you closer to getting it out of the ground and uh, bringing this to market? Yeah, so the, the drilling will finish that program up. Um, there's a lot we want to drill in Pilot Mountain. So we have the, the existing resource right now that we you know, have this fantastic new discovery zone. Um, so we're going to continue to drill at Desert Shielite, upgrade that resource in preparation for the PFS. There's a lot of other really interesting exploration targets. We just confirmed a causative porphyry, molybdenum rich porphyry as well. Uh, and there's another SCARN zone where we, where we identified uh, tungsten in that drill core as well. So there's a lot of drilling we need to do. So we're going to continue cracking away at that. That is literally ongoing 24 seven as we speak right now. And you, that, 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 that rig is drilling right now. I'm going to head to study on Friday actually to go and review that core myself and uh, meet with all the people that are working for us and, and, and helping push this forward. But what are the next steps? As I mentioned, the PFS is that really next important step. Um, and one thing we're looking to do here is 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 tap into non-dilutive government funding, which is which is available through the likes of the Department of Defense. Uh, and we've many times um, signaled our ambitions to receive and, and, and obtain funding through their DPA three program. So that continues to to progress. Um, you know, the, the reality is if we can tap into funds through the DOD or other really large U.S. organization, that funding allows us to just fast track things on the ground. Because right now as a CEO, you know, if I have to, if I'm at the whims of the capital markets, I got to go raise money to go and do these really important steps to get this thing closer to production, which is why we've made it a huge part of our, of our goal here and ambitions as a business is to tap into funding sources that are available so we can just say, don't need to raise any more money. Let's just take this money and deploy it in Nevada, in the ground, getting this project as, 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 as construction ready or close to, to production ready as possible. So the PFS, the drilling, the engineering, we're doing the environmental right now in the background. So all these important steps are pressing forward right now, looking to tap into the not only the government grant funding to fund all that. Um, but all the things that we need to do to get this thing production are currently in progress. And we'll continue to push those forward over the next six to 12 months uh, and then beyond. So I'm really glad that you brought that up because if you didn't, I was going to bring it up. One of the probably, I, w I don't want to say it's everything, but it's close to everything in my book is a share structure and dilution. How are you going to protect me as an investor 
Um, and I think you just answered that question. What is the, um, I mean, you might not be able to answer this, but I, I'm going to ask it anyways. What is the likelihood that you get government funding um, so you wouldn't dilute my shares? It, it, yeah, it's a good question. And I wish I could give you a definitive number. Um, I'll have to avoid doing that for now. But we've signaled multiple times and we've, we've, we've made it very clear that we're pushing forward endeavors to get funding through the U.S. government as quickly as we can to support this project. You know, I would encourage you to look at the likes of Perpetual Resources. Um, they've received two very large tranches uh, of funding through the DPA3 program to support their antimony project. And I've kind of, I think, laid out the reasons why antimony and tungsten are probably two of the most important defense metals right now. So I think looking at what they've done, we're a bit earlier stage and caught maybe 12 to 18 months sort of behind them roughly. But all the steps that they're taking are what we're looking to do here with this important tungsten project. But just to kind of to answer your question there about dilution, so yes, we're lucky to tap into U.S. government funding, um, and, and we're, we know that continues to to, to move forward, at, you know, in the background. Um, but moreover, you know, it's about doing capital raises, and we've done we've done capital raises, um, and I think the last time we spoke, Andy, I made it very clear as a CEO how much I care about dilution too, and as obviously as an investor or a listener or someone who's interested in the story. That's a question they ask me too is, okay, well, dilution, right? Is what if I wake up and you've issued hundred percent of your shares at some decreased price? Well, that doesn't protect me as a shareholder, but I think, and I'm glad you asked it because as a CEO truly does care about dilution. I think it's the proof is in the pudding. If you look at the press releases we put out since our IPO, you'll see that it's clear we are doing our very best to minimize it because I'm a shareholder myself. So if I do dilute the business, not only do I dilute, dilute my existing shareholders, I dilute myself as well. And I don't want to do that. I want to find ways to minimize dilution so we can maximize um, a potential, you know, monetization outcome for our shareholders and stakeholders, of which I am one of them. So as mentioned, we IPO'd in, in May of 2023. So that was about 18 months ago. Um, since then, we've done three capital raises. Two of those raises were done at a premium to the market. Um, the, 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 the first raise done after the IPO was at uh, 15 pence. So that's about 18, 19 cents US. We then did a raise at 22 and a half pence. Um, that's about 28 cents US. And then we just did, recently did a raise about six weeks ago. It was actually a North American uh, and mostly US focused capital raise that we did uh, for just under 3 million US dollars. That was done at 27 pence. Um, so that's about 35, 36 cents US. So what we've done is we continue to add value to the business and then we raise at, at, at subsequently higher levels and that minimizes dilution, obviously. So the track record, I think, speaks for itself. We're going to continue to do that. We're going to look at ways of tapping into non dilutive government grant funding to minimize dilution for our shareholders and for myself as well. Yeah. So about that, um, yeah, to all of our listeners, it's not that I particularly mind dilution, which we all mind it, but I just want to see the project moving forward if it's being raised to move the project or that's really, really key to me. Also, key disclosure, I am not a current shareholder. I have been on the past. Um, I more than likely will be after this video, this interview has been released, but just for full disclosure for everybody, I will do it after this information, this video has been released. Another thing that I am very keen on is that you're in the state of Nevada, which is basically, I don't want to say basically, it pretty much is the number one jurisdiction in the world to mining. So you're hitting a, uh, um, you're hitting all of the levers, if you would, um, that make it attractive to me. Um, let me just, let's wrap this up. What is the the timeline over the next three months, what should investors be looking for uh, with you and the company, uh, Guardian Metal Resources, um, what should they be aware of in your mind over the next three months? Yeah, of course. So just, just on the macro side, um, as mentioned, you know, potential announcement regarding funding through a U.S. government body. Um, we've been working on that for quite some time now, so we'd love to get some news out on that front to let everyone know um kind of what's transpired behind the scenes so to say um so that's something to, to look out look out for um obviously i can't make any confirmations about what that will look like um but um you know we've been working at that for quite some time now 
Um, certainly on the macro side, a potential foreign export ban out of China. That may or may not happen, but the speculation that I've heard is that sometime this year, and the consensus seems to be November for whatever reason. Um, so if that does happen, I think the spotlight will very quickly fall on companies like Guardian Metal Resources. As far as I know, Guardian Metal Resources is the only publicly traded U.S. focused tungsten company that exists. We're the only one. Um, so if you want rare earths, if you want all these other, you know, copper, silver, all these other metals that, that I, you know, are great to have in the portfolio, there's 10, 20, 30 names and ways to get exposure. If you want tungsten in the U S I believe from what I've seen, we are the only publicly traded company. Um, so what a position to be in with just that alone. Um, and then the other major catalyst is, is the drilling. So as I mentioned, you know, this drill result is, is very material. Um, and I encourage everyone to go and have a look at that. And, and we talk about how it fits into the picture, why it's so important, why we're so excited. But drilling is ongoing. I'm actually headed to Nevada. We've gone, we've moved the drill rig from where it was back to this area. And we're drilling for extensions of this very, very exciting and high grade dome. So we'll continue to put out news from the drilling program. We'll put out news about what we've found as we've looked to expand the zone and how big it potentially be. Um, and then we're going to continue to crack on with drilling across Desert Chile at some of the other exploration target. There's a whole bunch of other assets in the portfolio, which are really, really exciting in perspective for, for gold and copper. We won't focus on those today, but those are, I think, three really important things to look out for. The drilling is something that we are pushing forward at pace. There's going to be a lot of drilling news to come. Um, drilling will be continuing here for the least the next couple of weeks and months, um, with results to, to follow thereafter. So it's going to be really busy period for the company. I've actually said it's the busiest period for us to date. Um, and we're really just getting started here. It's a really exciting journey we're on here. We're looking to be part of the U.S. solution for tungsten and the U.S. needs one very quickly here. Yeah, excellent. And also for all of our viewers and listeners on the podcast, um, you've had a great run and I had you on in February. Uh, I want to say you're on 20 cents a share on the over-the-counter markets here in the U.S. And then you topped out. And when I say topped out, just you had a, a good run up to around 50 cents or a little bit over 50. We've settled down some. So this could be an, a good entry point for uh, people that are looking to get exposure to it. Um, Oliver, give me your uh, over-the-counter uh, ticker and give me your uh, website where people want to follow the story. Yeah, of course. So the, the website is guardianmetalresources.com. Um, we're also very, very active on Twitter. So I encourage you to just type that into Twitter if you do use that platform. Um, we post there almost daily, including myself as well. Lots of good information coming through there. Uh, and then on the exchange side, so our, our home listing is here in London, uh, and we trade it under the ticker GNET. Um, but for the American listers, we have an OTQX listing, which is sort of the premium OTC listing. Um, the ticker there is GNTLF. Um, you can find us on, I believe, all major U.S. trading platforms. So I encourage you to, to go to our website, go to our Twitter um, reach out to me. I'm always, always interested and open to speaking to potential investors and giving them a bit more detail about the story. Like I said, we're just getting started here. Tungsten is such a critical, critical metal right now. Uh, and we are positioned perfectly here at Guardian Metal Resources. Excellent. Thank you so much, Oliver. I appreciate your time. Great. Thank you. Indeed.